I'm Mike. I'm Jason. Welcome to Snake Envy. So we've been talking the last couple weeks about breeding season. It won't be long, and I'm sure for you it goes by pretty quickly, but here uh, come summer, you'll start selling snakes. Um, summer into fall. So let's talk a little bit about the relationship between hobbyists, customers, and breeders, and what we appreciate as a hobbyist from breeders and what you appreciate from customers as a breeder. All right. So let's start with you. Um, what's one of the things that you appreciate when dealing with a customer? One thing I really appreciate is do you know what you're getting into, know what you're purchasing, know how to keep and care for it. I mean, I still will share, but as an owner of an animal, you should really know what you're getting into before even purchasing. So I really do appreciate it when someone knows how to take care and how to set up and properly care for the animal. I really appreciate that part of it. And I'll, and I'll share, I generally share information as well, but you really should know what you're getting into. And, so, and, prob I, and probably even have your enclosure ready to roll. <laughs> yeah, you should have it set up um, before you even get it. Yeah, your time's valuable. You're going to be selling as many as 1,000, 1,200 snakes in a year. So you can't be the only <laughs> source of education that those 1,200 people have. It would really right. take up <laughs> too much of your time. Uh, now, from a customer's perspective, um, one of the things I love is when a breeder doesn't seem put out when I'm asking to see parents or lineage. If I buy a king snake, I know what I'm getting. <laughs> the, the hatchling is basically uh, the finished product. But if I'm buying a gopher snake, which is something you know well, I don't. Um, the colors are going to change pretty dramatically. The patterns can change. Um, I really appreciate being able to see the parents because when I go into this transaction, I kind of have in my mind what, because there's a lot of variety, I know what I'm looking for. And seeing the parents is not a guarantee of anything, of course, but it sure helps. And some breeders seem put out when you say, hey, could I get a picture of mom and dad? Or <laughs> yeah, and I get that. It doesn't, I, it doesn't do seem it. like a big ask, but again, your time is limited. Well, and I do get it, but there's certain cases where, like, I started the red albino bulls, and people want to see those parents, and the offspring that they produce blow away the parents. The thing that people yeah. don't understand, that red gene is a line bred trait. And so the parents are generally, like my parents, they were early on. Even my F2s were early on that they did not show the colors well. And people would want to see them and they would never even want to buy them after they seen the parents. Oh, I see. So, so I, sometimes that can backfire. Yeah. Because the parents aren't going to show as well as yeah. the offspring. I think I'd still, uh, there's cases, you know, yeah. appreciate an explanation of that. That okay, here's the parents, but keep in mind the babies are going to look a lot better, and here's how. Yeah, um, yeah I, but I, I get that. That's something I hadn't thought of. Interesting. So yeah, the further you get away, the further you get down the line in the breeding projects, <laughs> the parents yeah. don't show well anymore. And some don't, and some do. Yeah. So it's, that's that's good. That's good for uh, customers to understand. Maybe sometimes why you're reluctant to show them. Uh, what's the next one? What do you appreciate when dealing with customers? I really um, appreciate when a customer is direct. They know what they're looking for, what they want, and they have a goal in mind. Instead of just calling up, hey, what what do you recommend? Or, or what do you have? <laughs> or what do you have? Or what do you recommend? What would do you have any projects? You know, it's just yeah. like I don't like telling people what to buy or do. Like I want, I want you to make up your decision. Buy what you like, not what I like. So, yeah. Um, I really, I do 
I appreciate people being direct and knowing what they want. Probably being direct, too, about timelines. Like, if you can't provide what they're looking for or if you're not going to have it that year, it's best to know that yeah. <laughs> right, right up front. And usually I, I'll tell people, like, I'm out and this summer or maybe two years from now or, you know, at least I can direct them in that way. Yeah. My, my second one is I appreciate when breeders over-communicate rather than under. Um, even if you're sending me an email or a text or whatever it might be, just saying that we're still on schedule and really there's no new information, I appreciate that. It tells me that you haven't forgot about me. Um, it tells me that I, I have dealt with breeders who have waiting lists, and waiting lists are good and bad because on the one hand, I love the fact that I can get on a waiting list early, get confirmation that I'm on it. I kind of know my place in line. But the downside to a waiting list is you usually don't hear anything <laughs> until the snakes are ready and there's very little communication yeah. in between. So it kind of goes both ways. I'd rather the communication be more, even if I'm not learning something new, than to always be wondering, have I been forgot about? And it's tough because I appreciate the breeder's time and, and you don't want to be the pest and you don't want to be the person. That, yeah. that they're starting to hate dealing with but at the same time you kind of want to know that you know yeah. that, that you haven't been forgot about so I, I love it when they over communicate yeah and I I don't keep waiting lists anymore um, I used to I I quit doing it because 50% of the people don't follow through and so that's one reason yeah. for a breeder why I don't do it and there's, there's more, but that's that's probably the biggest one. Yeah, and I get it. It's probably got to be tough to try and communicate with several hundred people and over I, a breeding season. Yeah, and I don't want to take someone's money if I can't provide yeah. the product they want or yeah. the animal they want. What's number three? Um, I appreciate it when people value my time. I did have a phone call today at work, and... Um, I just mentioned the guy, to the guy, I said, can I get back to you this evening? Because I'm at work right now. And he was very appreciative and very kind about it. And so, yeah, um, just being, I like it when people are mindful of my time. And it, some days are long. Some days are 14-hour days. So it's hard for somebody like me that has six snakes to really appreciate the amount of work that goes into caring for hundreds of snakes and then come hatching season when you you've, yeah, you've got another <laughs> another thousand on top of it yeah i uh it is it's it's tough to appreciate what's going on behind the scenes and and i can see where uh, and, and as you mentioned some people don't realize this isn't your full-time job um so you got a lot on your plate. Uh, my third one matches your second one, and that's be direct. Um, I'll give you, I'll give everybody an example of how you were direct with me a few years ago. You had a brand new breeding project that you were working on. I heard about it, had some interest. When I, when the time came to let you know, yes, I'd be interested in getting one of those snakes. You educated me a little bit about how those breeding projects start out. You told me that this being the first go-round, your priority was going to be holdbacks and selling off pairs. Um, and you were straightforward. You said, yes, I'll absolutely take care of you, but just know that if you don't want a pair, I can't give you priority. And I can't promise what, if anything, will be left after holdbacks and pairs. And then going forward as the, the breeding project progresses, obviously there's going to be more snakes available every year and you'll be more flexible and you'll be holding back fewer. I appreciated that because you, what you could have done is you could have taken a deposit and made me think that I was going to get something that wasn't fully guaranteed. You also could have strung me along and, and said, oh yeah, yeah, you know, um, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely be on the list and let's talk when they come. Instead, I decided to pass based on what you told me, went to plan B, I've been extremely happy with my plan B snake over the last few years, and 
I appreciated that tremendously. That I, I there was no guesswork, uh, there was no anticipation of something that might not have been, and that's how it should be. Be straightforward, be direct. I think it's the same way with timelines. You know, tell people that hey, that that whatever hard to feed that hognose snake that their heart is set on, it's going to be a while. You know, um, yeah, it, you're not going to get one of those in August. <laughs> they might hatch, but right. there's a little bit of work that may go into it. So, yeah, especially with the like the berry bands and the mountain king snakes, there is, you know, the feeding yeah strategies. So if people know that going in whole transactions easier everybody comes away with a more positive experience um, I think it's great when we learn a little more about each other's perspectives and what we're thinking and so hopefully this helps folks out there please comment please subscribe we're hoping in the future we can do some episodes that are just based on your questions so we'd love to answer any questions tell us about the great or not so great experiences you've had either as a breeder or as a customer, uh, and those will be fun to talk about in the future as well. Thank you. Thanks.